With that in mind, um, I want to read Hebrews 13, 17, which is a familiar text that says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. So there's a command there to be obedient to the leaders of the church. And yet we know that there are churches where leaders are abusive and uh, uh, take advantage of, of what they think is God-given authority and actually abuse the sheep. What are the biblical parameters for this? That opens up a, a wide discussion. Uh, first, I need to say this, and this is the bottom line. No preacher by virtue of his calling has any authority. I possess absolutely no authority by virtue of my calling over anybody, any time. I don't have a right to rule people. I don't have a right to rule the leadership of the church. I don't have any right to make decisions about everything. The only authority that I possess, it's not academic because I'm better trained, it's not because of my calling to preach and teach, it's not because I'm called the senior pastor. The only authority I have at all in the church is the delegated authority that comes through the Word of God. The only time I can ever speak authoritatively about anything is when I speak the Word of God. Um, I don't have authority to say, you become this, you do this, you go over here, you do this, paint this room green, buy this property, whatever. And I've never, I've never exercised authority in those ways. I don't have authority over people's lives. God has authority over the life of His church. That authority is basically from His Word and by His Spirit, and I'm simply the instrument to tell people what the Word says and what it means. So that is the only authority that I have. When a pastor gets beyond biblical authority, he has abused his position. Um, to tell people how to live, what to do, who to marry, to control their lives, to dominate their lives, tell them how much money to give, uh, that, that, is, that is an abuse of the, the role of the pastor who is merely a shepherd with delegate authority under the great shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, the application of Hebrews 13, 17 applies to those who are faithful. If you go back to the book of Jeremiah, even God excoriated the shepherds who, who misled Israel, right? False shepherds, false prophets. And, and all through Scripture, everybody has been warned in every generation of, of history uh, in the revelation of God, there has always been a warning about false teachers, false shepherds. Um, of course, it reaches an apex in the, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, when, when Jesus says uh, to the people of Israel in, in the Passion Week, don't follow them, do not follow them. Uh, the apostles uh, of the New Testament pick up the same thing. Uh, perhaps the most definitive passage would be Second Peter uh, or Jude, where we are very, very seriously warned about following false leaders, false teachers. How do you judge the true? You judge them by their fidelity to the Word of God, both in what they say and how they live. Um, there are two ways to be a heretic. You can be a doctrinal heretic and you can be a moral heretic. Uh, so you're to follow those who are true to the faith. So the assumption in Hebrews 13 is, is that this congregation of Hebrews believers have legitimate, honest, faithful shepherds, and they need to follow those shepherds. Uh, you need to flee false shepherds. You need to flee abusive shepherds. Now there are movements in the church today, and I, and I use the plural because there are several like this uh, that cite this text and others, and in and otherwise sound churches where uh, under the name, under the guise of discipleship, uh, the elders of the church or the pastor of the church exercises a, a sort of control over the minutia of a person's life where they want to have access to your checkbook to see how you're yeah, spending sure. your money. And that sort of accountability you would see as over the top. Completely. Um, Jesus said, you know, He made this very clear, we're not like the Gentiles. We don't lord it over people, right? Those are His very words. We don't. We don't act like the Gentiles. We don't lord it over people. Uh, we're the servant of everybody. To understand the role of a pastor or an elder in a church is to understand that your responsibility is to serve. First of all, you serve God by the dissemination of His truth. Another simple but foundational truth is Christ is the head of the church, not me. Christ is the head of the church. Through the years, you know this, I have preached messages in various environments on Christ the head of the church. And somebody might say, well, everybody knows that. Well, no, they don't. 
No, they don't. That doctrine, that great truth of Christ, the head of the church, has sailed down to this generation on a sea of blood. People, people died. They were martyred trying to uphold Christ as the head of the church. They were massacred for affirming Christ as the head of the church in England, Scotland, lots of other places in the world. And, um, and it is still true that Christ is the head of the church. How does He rule in His church? He rules in His church by speaking to His church. How does He speak to His church? Through His Word. How do they know what His Word says? Through the servant that He has put in that place. I am a servant of the Lord, first of all. Secondly, I am a servant of the people. Um, I don't find anything in the Scripture with regard to lording it over people except serious warnings, very serious warnings against that.